you know, those three plants that were on strike, Wayne, Missouri, and Toledo, those obviously were impactful. Now when you add 38 additionals, you'll start to see the ripple effect very, very soon. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. And I know you talked about, um, you know, targeting those facilities, not only with production, but also those the place where there are low-tiered workers. And that is one of the sticking points also uh, for the UAW is getting rid of those, rid of those tiers. Yeah, so in fact, the, the folks that work in these plants here, specifically packaging, they are, as you mentioned, they're technically Mopar employees. Mopar is the, the parts division of Chrysler stash, so, uh, slash Stellantis, so yeah, they are the ones that are earning the least on that tier. Now, they're trying to get rid of that tier progression system. That's part of the contract negotiations, and GM Stellantis both saying, as of right now, that they still exist. Ford, in their negotiations, said that that will go away. What I'd like to do is there's a couple of uh, local members here. In fact, Larry Wynn is the local chapter president. So I'm going to squeeze over here and talk to Larry. Hey, Larry, sorry to bug you. We're live on Channel 4 right now. Can you just kind of explain to us a little bit more about um, the, the pay wages here at the Mopar as, a, as it compares to, say, assemblies or stamping plants? So what it is with Mopar, in 2019, it was put in a contract that all workers that hired at 2019 would cap out at $25 an hour. Now, I got hired before then, I made $31.57. So just within that, it's crazy to us. You know, it creates a third tier, not just two tiers, it's three tiers now. So we're fighting for equality for all our workers across the board at Stellantis. We want everybody to make the same wages. Like I said before, this place has been the backbone of the company for many years. In down times, when cars weren't selling, Mopar was making money. We never lose money in this facility. Can you kind of explain for the folks at home that don't understand the pack packaging plant's purpose, you are essentially in charge of getting not only new parts out, but parts to repair current vehicles that are on the road. Correct. And we also do warranty work as well. So this is not just a packaging facility, it's a warehouse too, where we pick parts to go straight to the dealership. Sometimes when plants run out of parts, let's say like shop down the road, and they need parts to continue build, they come here and get parts. So we are a very key part to this organization. So some people might just say, oh, distribution, that's just a, a shipping and trucking center. But essentially, this could kind of shut down the operations across the board. Correct. And like I said, um, we are very important. We were deemed essential during COVID. We've lost members to COVID. We worked all through the pandemic. And we did, at the end of the day, we just want our fair share. Gotcha. Larry, I think, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Christy, I heard you chime in there just to kind of piggyback on a few things. One thing that uh, on the other side of the story, of course, is GM, Stellantis, and Ford, which the UAW president, Sean Fain, uh, admitted that Ford is much further along in the progression. That's why we're not seeing uh, any additional strikes at any Ford locations. But GM yesterday put out a big thing, maybe it was two days ago, explaining why they don't have the money for this. And they say that, yes, maybe in 2022, we made $9.9 .9 billion of profits, but we are spending 11 to $12 billion on electric vehicles and building that infrastructure and those plants. That's where they're coming from on that side of things. The workers here, as you hear, they're asking for more pay and, as they say, equal pay. Hey, Nick, one more question. What do any of the Stellantis workers have to say about the, uh, the deal so far that the UAW has been able to get with Ford? I mean, Ford is not part of today's targets. You know, obviously, the Wayne Assembly is still under strike. But were they hearing any of the details that Sean Fain talked about earlier today? And what were some of their reaction? Have you had a chance yet to talk to them about that? I, I have talked to a few of them about that. Now, ironically, they were still on shift during Sean Fain's announcement, so they didn't hear a lot of the details of that. But when I filled them in, a lot of them kind of stopped, paused, and they see it as a good thing. So, yes, they are Stellantis workers, but they say if there's one company that's making progress, that usually means that the other two will start to follow suit. They see it as a good thing, even though they're part of the company that's not making progress right now. Monticelli live in Centerline. Um, thanks so much, and also bringing that interview with Sean Fain for us. We'll see you in a little bit. Really appreciate it.